Robin George here with you, aka VHS82 Apostrophe with day number 23. Can it be happy Monday if there's ever such a thing? Um, I think not. Um, what we got here today, man? Uh, watch this the other night, revisited the other night. Um, classic from Bob Clark, man. Um, it, it, this dude's done some crazy stuff, man. But uh, I always forget about, um, I love this, P.S., Children shouldn't play with dead things. Uh, from VCI, man. Entertainment. Uh, little synopsis on the back. It's short enough. Led by Alan, um, and that is Alan Ormsby. <laughs> Alan, a mean-spirited director, a theater trope, travels by boat to a small island for buried criminals using... Now, that kind of makes sense now. Uh, a grimoire, using a grimoire... Alan begins to uh, seance to raise the dead. The group finds more than they bargained for when the dead return from their graves, forcing the troop to take refuge in an old abandoned caretaker's house. Can they stay put until daylight against the undead onslaught, or do they flee into the pitch black night? Will anyone survive? <laughs> this is mandatory late October watch. And I, I and I didn't watch it the other night like this, and I wish I would have. I should have watched it in black and white. I had this weird sneaking suspicion that if you just take the color out, put up the contrast a little bit, turn all the lights off, if it's possible to have a pitch black room on a big TV, I have a funny feeling you'd be in for a real treat. Now, it's a bit of a slow burn in the sense that they get to this island and they take... They, um, they pull a prank first, but they have dug up Orville... Um, uh, a dead guy. They dig him up. And they take him back to the house after the prank. Um, Alan is pretty mean-spirited, man. Uh, you know, I always hear, you know, reviews of stage fright that um, Peter is uh, is mean-spirited as a director. Uh, and he has got nothing on this guy. This guy is a nut job. Um, and, you know, he's into saying, look at BCI, man. They did it. just an insane job. Sorry about the glare on this. Um, anyways, and so after the practical, uh, joke or whatever, they take old Orville back to the, uh, the house and they start doing all this crazy stuff, man. This, uh, just this, this wedding, pseudo wedding thing between Alan and the corpse and just, and there's this one girl, man, she just, she just, she just knows this is all wrong and this is not going to end well for any of them. And, uh. And it does take a while. It feels like it takes a while. But when the incantation, the spell, whatever, it first affects the uh, the buried um, out there. Orville takes a while to wake up. But when he does, man, it is a full oh, man. Um, and so they, uh, so the dead start coming. Well, there's a couple guys, part of the group that out there burying, uh, burying a corpse, I think. So when they come back to the out, or they, they're out there digging and the dead start to come out. And so they flee back to the house. Well, one of them does. And they uh, realize that uh, they come out of the house and they realize they're all in trouble. And, uh, of course, Alan is, um, yeah, I think he's, yeah, everyone's out there together. And so they're trying to flee from the dead. A few of them get wasted pretty quick. And uh, and then ultimately, um, a couple of them get back to the house uh, only to just, you know, get basically torn up. And uh, Alan and the girl, it's it's a great moment. Alan and the girl, like one, the girl that was like totally freaking out, right? Um, they get upstairs. They they start to, and this is the scene. I remember as a kid, rang this on VHS. Um, this is a scene that blew me away as a kid. I like my mouth at the floor. I'm like, what? They get up the stairs and he literally just pushes the girl into the arms of the zombies to try by himself time. Uh, not having any idea that when he gets up top, Orville has wake has woken up. Um, and it's not the prettiest reunion. <laughs> I mean, this movie is nuts, man. When you think about this and Black Christmas and uh, the other things Bob Clark has done, and it ends it ends with an ominous view of just, um, you know, you think as uh, Fulci's uh, zombies crossing the bridge, right, into New York City, or uh, the, the very end moment of um, Hell of the Living Dead. Um and how that ends, um, sort of this apocalyptic vibe going on, right? Well, this is a pretty morbid movie, man. And 
they, you know, maybe not everyone in, in the group, but man, Alan really does bring it on himself and the rest of them. And I don't know, man, this movie is creepy, 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 creepy. And I don't watch it very often. It's just got this, it's like Black Christmas. It's a different vibe with Black Christmas, but this one is just, I don't know, it's got this really weird, like, I don't know if I've ever seen a movie quite like this, that it just, I don't know, man, it just unsettles your stomach or something. It's just weird. But anyways, black and white, pitch black room. I don't think you, I think this could be a great, great experience. Um, maybe even pushed, uh, maybe a double feature with um, uh, the, the, let sleeping corpses lie um would be a great double feature watch them both in black and white i think that would be great double feature some growl and some bob clark anyways on uh oh real quick um so it runs uh so this is 1972 it runs one hour and 27 minutes just so you know and um alan ornsby is also responsible i think for some of the writing and the effects too um the guy who plays orville's pretty freaking good man um yeah interesting interesting creepy little vibe man i i'd say this and let sleeping corpses lie great double feature man great double feature we're getting there man we're getting there as always man go bills this is not a dream not a dream we might be useful to